computer uh, case, which is aluminum, and I'm going to run it to a, a known ground in, in the vehicle because the, the computer's under the dash. So I get a, a lead wire and I put two terminals on it and I screw one into the into the computer and I screw another one into a ground this a ground stud that's underneath the dash on this thing. So I know I got a good ground on the on the on the on the front on the frame or the case of the computer. So I'm like, okay, this should work. I mean, everything else I did didn't work. This should work. Put it in, hook the battery back up, turn it over, won't start. Nothing. I got fuel pressure and and now I can hear. When I turn it over and I, let it, and I crank it for a few times and I shut the key off, I can hear the gurgling inside the fuel injection unit. Okay, I can hear the fuel gurgling and I've got 30 pounds of pressure on my gauge. So I know that I've got fuel pressure. I know I've got fuel pressure at the injectors. I know I've got spark because when I spray flammable liquid down inside the car, the fuel, uh, the, the throttle body, it starts. So I'm like, what is going on? I just, I, I've literally replaced everything here. Okay, I don't know what else to do. Well, then I remembered online. Uh, when I was reading, another, another person said, well, you, you, you might have a bad ignition module because the ignition module tells the uh, injectors when to fire, which I don't think that's true. I think the computer reads the ignition module and tells the injectors when to fire. I think the computer on this car controls pretty much everything. So I remember out in my shop, I got this brand new um, computer distributor that is basically the same as what I have in my in my RV so I proceed to bring it out here I'm not gonna replace the whole trip I'm not gonna do all that so I pull the uh, ignition modules out of this pull the ignition modules out of my distributor in the in the engine replace them swap them out make sure I put dielectric grease on the bottom you want to make sure you do that because you don't want it to get hot and burn it up the heat the heat sink so you want to do that so I put this all back together turn it over still don't start still won't start well then I'm thinking, well, you know, I just put the ignition module in it. Maybe I should spray some more flammable liquid down the, the uh, throttle body and see what happens. So I spray fuel down the body, crank it over. Well, now it won't even start. It won't even fire. And I'm like, okay, maybe this ignition module is not good. Maybe it's bad. So I get my little spark tester out, put it on my uh, one of my spark plug wires. Guess what? No spark. So now I got no spark and no injector pulse. Like, okay, I need to start going backwards here. So I pull the ignition module back out of the distributor, the brand new one I just put in there, put the old one back in, and hooked it all back up. I spray flammable liquid down the, uh, the throttle body, and it fires. I'm like, okay, so at least I got spark back. I still don't have the injector pulse, but I got spark back, okay? So, so here, here, here's what I did, and here's what I discovered. And, I really hope this helps somebody because there's there's a lot of discussion on the internet about TBI systems and people having the same exact issue I have where you've got you've got a fuel pump. I've replaced the fuel pump. I've replaced the ignition models. I've replaced the ECM. I've done all this stuff, but I still can't get the injectors to fire. Well, I've been doing this since I was 15 years old, and I'm almost 60, and I have never seen this in my life. And this is a very unique situation. So let me show you. What I discovered when I started doing a little bit of, of digging in this thing, okay, I got, I got to think, I got, I got to think, I got, I got, okay, I've got a brand new fuel pump, I've got a brand new fuel pump relay, I've got a brand new oil pressure sending unit, uh, I know the ignition module is good because the spark plugs are firing, I've got a brand new ECU which cost me almost $200, I spent like about $400 on this thing and two days worth of work, okay, so I'm racking my brain like what is going on with this thing, there's got to be something I can figure out here, so then I'm thinking okay, there's got to be it must be a connection somewhere. Somewhere there's, there's there's a wire or something that's that's corroded or bad or something. And I'm thinking, you know, the, the, there's all these plugs underneath the hood, and they're exposed to weather, and maybe water got in one of them and damaged it somehow. And of course, there's a thousand wires. This thing. I'm like, I'm never gonna find what's going on with this thing. I'm never gonna find it. There's no way I'm gonna find out what's going on with this thing. But then I thought, you know, I got this little. Oh, and by the way. One thing I've got to tell you, and I know you're probably thinking, well, uh, what about the fuses? Okay, sorry. Um, way back when I replaced the fuel pump, before I replaced the fuel pump relay and the oil pressure sitting in it and the ECU, I pulled all the fuses out, checked everyone, they were all good. Not a single bad fuse in the whole thing. I did have one fuse missing for the heater, but I think I took it out at another time when I had a blown fuse because I didn't have a fuse on me and used it somewhere else. And so I just put a new fuse in the heater, and now the heater works, the, the blower motor. Okay, so, but that, that wouldn't affect it anyhow. So anyhow, so I did check all the fuses. They were all good. 
Well, then I've got this little $5, you know, multimeter that I'm using, checking stuff with. So I decide, you know, I'm gonna start checking the fuses in the fuse box, even though sometimes when a fuse looks good, it's not, and you think it is, but it's not. So I start checking the fuse, you know, on top the, the the spade type fuses that I have. Here, let me show you what I got. Okay. So I got this type of fuse right here, if you guys can see that. See that? That's what I got, that type of fuse, okay? It's got spades on the bottom here that connect, you know, across two terminals. But then in the top, it's got a little wire piece sticking out. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but in the top, there's a little wire piece. So you can probe that to see if you got voltage. So I'm thinking, and I've seen in my lifetime, I've seen these fuses. And here, let me show you, I don't know if you can see this or not, but in the middle, there's a little, there's a little piece of metal that goes up and back down again, back down again. That's the fuse, okay? If it blows, that burns up, okay? And I've seen in my lifetime where these would blow off to one side, on this side or that side, they'd blow on, up, up against the spade. You wouldn't be able to tell they were blown, okay? So I'm thinking, okay, let me take my $5 test light and let me start checking these, probing these on top and checking them. So I start checking, I look, and there's a, there's a, a fuse, a 10 amp fuse that says ECM. I check it, 12 volts, 12 volts. Okay, that's okay. Another fuse that said fuel pump. I check it, 12 volts, 12 volts. Okay, that's good. Okay, then I see another one that says ECM slash ignition. So I check it on one side, it's 12 volts. Check it on the other side and it's, it starts jumping around. I'm like, well, that's weird. It's like jumping back and forth between zero and 12 volts. What is going on? Does it, does it have voltage or not? So, let's, let me show you what I found. All right, let's go inside my fine piece of equipment here. I gotta put the legs up on my camera like I always do. Here, I'll let you guys look at my... And I, I tell you what, guys, I bought this thing for $100. And I know you probably don't think I'm telling you the truth, but I did. I bought it for $100. And it's got a 454 in it. It's got 42,000 miles on it, I think. And after I did some work to it initially, I initially had to replace the ECM because it was blown. And I had to replace the fuel pump and do a tune-up on it. Uh, and then I drove it for about 20 or 30 miles to a storage facility and it started running really crappy. And I ended up finding out that I had like three or four bent push rods because the valves were sticking. So I took all the push rods out of it and tapped on the the valve spring spray them with lubricant and tap on them to get them to break loose because a couple of the valves were stuck and they just bent the push rods and once i got all them freed up i uh uh put new push rods in it set the valves and changed the oil on it and it's run like a top ever since this is the first problem i've had with it since but i, I drove it from kansas city to here 300 miles last summer and it, it it didn't miss a lick all the way down it ran great so now this is this is it this is my hundred dollar rv it's a sunrise you know it's nothing fancy it's, it's showing some age from being sitting outside because i don't have any place to put it inside but if we go inside here we can look around real quick and uh you know on the inside um let's see here okay anyhow on the inside here you know it ain't bad it's it's a little dated because it's 1995 so it's you know it's kind of ugly looking but you know, I got my mattresses airing out out in, the, out in the yard, and the ceiling's coming down when I need to fix that. But you know, I'll fix that. The carpet's kind of jinky, but you know, whatever. I mean, it's, it's a nice RV. It's, it's clean. Um, it's got a microwave, a nice gas stove here, and a sink. It had a refrigerator here, but the, when I bought it, the refrigerator had had food in it for like over 10 years, and it was literally covered in black mold. And I just literally ripped it out and threw it in the trash. And I don't have a gas refrigerator because they're like a thousand dollars and i'm not going to pay a thousand dollars for a refrigerator for this thing so i just got a regular 12 volt mini fridge i put in here i mean not 120 volt uh, mini fridge that i put in here and i use that and that's fine so anyhow let's go up here okay so here's the engine on this thing 454 tbi throttle body injection and the dash on this thing actually lifts up and you can get underneath the dash okay so one thing i did was when that when the fuel pump wasn't working i thought you know i wonder if i can just run a jumper wire to the fuel pump and make it make it work so i got underneath the dash 
and there's a million freaking wires under here but I found right here I found a red and a black wire that are cooked to nothing they're just extra wires and this red wire when you turn the key on it it's hot so I put this little 20 amp breaker on a on a wire and connect this to that and it would allow me to turn the fuel pump on without with that with the key being on but um, just just to be able to verify the fuel pump was working and I did that and it worked okay I spliced into it down here by the engine the the fuel pump wire comes from this harness this big fat harness right here that runs along the engine the fuel pump harness runs through that harness and runs down all the way back to the back so you can see where I spliced into it okay I got to fix that and this white wire over here is the wire that went up to that breaker okay but if I wire that in and I plug that in, my fuel pump will work anytime I turn the key on, even if the engine isn't running, it'll, it'll run my fuel pump. So that's kind of a nice touch to have to be able to check fuel pressure. I'm going to leave it that way because if I ever need to check fuel pressure, I don't have to have the vehicle running to check it. I can just plug that in, turn the fuel pump on, and I can check fuel pressure. So anyhow, here's the fuse box over here, okay? So like I said, I, pull, I pulled the fuse box out because I had to work on it. So I'm gonna get down here where you guys can see this, hopefully. So if you look right there, you'll see, I know it's kind of fuzzy, it says ECM ignition, okay? So if you look on the left, you can see right there where my finger is, you can see the spade where the, where the fuse plugs in, right? Well, on the right side, the spade looks kind of weird. So I got to looking at it, and it's, by the way, it's a pink wire with a black tracer. Well, here's what that spade looked like. Can you guys see that? 